This show the Richardson and defensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns. Here to shout out three point conversion, man. Radio show hot. You know, I'm all geared up right now. You know, got jersey, whatever. Um, got my, um, we got family in the building, man. We um, have a um, great guest coming on. This man is, uh, his perseverance is pr- probably the most impressive thing, you know, when it comes to this young man. And now to see him in the NFL, of course, and he with the Bears, I mean, that's just the cherry on top. My guy, Mr. James Walters. What's going on today, sir? What's going on, Rafael? How you doing? I'm good, man. Man, uh... I, I, you know what? I'm not going. We're going to do talk after the show because I want to ask you about that situation. But we're going to leave it down. I'm not even going to bring you on that. But um, man, so like I was saying, you had a um, a very interesting path coming into the NFL. You know, after college, you you were on practice squads, um, even on just uh, like trying out for teams since 2015. Went to Calgary, won a great cup. Um, I think one time you went to Calgary, came back to the NFL, tried out for some teams, then went back just when you won a great cup. And now you are with the Chicago Bears as a linebacker. My question is, most players going through what you've gone through, they've given up. They had given up, and you know what? I'm done. It's not going to happen. What was it with you that kept you – on this path and that you were like, nah, I'm making it to the NFL. Um, it was one of those things where I just kind of had to, uh, I guess, get to the point where I was really confident enough in my ability that I said, I don't care if I got to wait a year. I don't care if I have to wait two years to play football again after I got injured with the Packers in, uh, in 15. I said, I mean, I'm going to prove to everybody, you know, that I got the – that I have what it takes because I feel like I showed it in that preseason when I played with the Packers. And uh, for a variety of reasons, I just didn't get a chance to show it on uh, on Sundays during a regular season. And I felt like I was a player of that quality and I was willing to do whatever it took to show it. Mm. Absolutely. That's definitely what's up. I first want to give you, <clears throat> excuse me, shout out for being more than just a football player. You got your degree in political science. That's That's real big, man. So props for that. Um, Appreciate that for sure. Now, although you grew up here in Atlanta, you were born in Chicago. How does it feel playing for the Bears? And is your pops and family happy about that? Uh, it's special, man. It's kind of there's a lot of strange coincidences that that kind of went into it. I mean, I was born in Chicago in '93. Uh, My parents were living uh, just a few blocks from Soldier Field mm. uh, when I was born, and uh, so it was just a strange coincidence that after preseason with the Bears. They ended up giving me a number 93 without me even really asking for it. So it was kind of poetic in a lot of ways. And, you know, my earliest memories are, of, you know, going to Navy Pier, probably two or three years old, top of Sears Tower, top of the giant Hancock building, you know, deep dish pizza, all that. And we still got cousins, and my parents got a lot of friends still in the city as well. So are they, I mean, are they geeked? Because I, I know they are, man. Just the fact that, like you said, you got have family, you know, you was with the Packers, and I hate, you know, it's horrible that, like you said, you didn't get to showcase what you have. But, I mean, just thinking about how God turned that situation around, now you with the best team possible with the Bears, <laughs> you know, forget the Packers. <laughs> um, but how <laughs> – but, no, how uh, – like, how rewarding is that for them? Like, are, were they, like, ecstatic when you told them, like, I'm going to be a Chicago Bears? Well, it was one of the things – I was texting my dad, really, when I had the tryout after – after the uh, CFL season in 2018, and uh, he had a feeling, and I kind of had a feeling as well, and so did my agent that like there was a there's an opportunity at at Chicago, and they're a high quality organization, and there were a lot of a lot of factors that went into me deciding to, you know, try to try to get on with the Bears, but you know, they, I can tell that it's something that my dad's really excited about. I mean, they lived there for 12 years. And, uh, you know, I think they're always excited to come to the games of the city that they love. And uh, I'm just glad to have the opportunity. All right. And once again, we're here live with 
Chicago Bears linebacker James Valters. So what is it like playing on a great defense, man? Like, you have all these veterans, Khalil Mack, Dan Trevathan, Akeem Hicks. Like, what was it like playing on this defense and learning from those guys? Um, For me, I mean, I, I'm just glad that uh, it, it's not as much what I've learned, but it's just an appreciation of being able to be on a team with guys who want to win, guys who understand team football, and guys that have been successful at it for several years because I think the club does a great job of combining veteran leadership with guys who are who are just hungry to win, whether it's because they've been doubted at some point in their career or they come from a small school. We I feel like we just have a good chemistry of guys who both have done it for a long time and are veterans and have shown that they can lead and guys that are willing to take that leadership. So what can we expect from the defense this year, especially by adding Robert Quinn and Gibson? What can we expect from the – Chicago Bears, Monsters of the Midway this year? I think it's a continuation kind of, of of what the club has done as far as just trying to, as like, I, like I said, create a chemistry between the team. And I feel like there will be a lot of competition at, at, at all the positions and guys will be in a situation where they feel like, you know, there's something to be done here and we can, we can really push to, like, win by any means necessary. And before we let you go, I have to ask this. So, you grew up here in Atlanta. You went to Tucker High School. You were a Falcons fan, right? Or what? Which team were you a fan of? Uh, I was more just a fan of watching football in general. I like to see you know good players play. Like a lot of the guys that were good when I was coming up, uh, Julius Peppers, Terrell Suggs, uh, Clay Matthews. I just enjoy watching watching other outside linebackers play the game well. Because I was going to ask you, I always wondered this. You know how so. Like you have Julius Peppers and team, you know, players you like. So, and you might have a team or so that you might, you know, find of. When you get to the NFL now, you're playing with the Bears. Does it get to the point where you like, like, man, now I'm playing against the Falcons? Like, you know, it was it? Do you automatically as soon as you play with the Bears, you just switch to like, man, I hate every team in the NFL? Or is it kind of hard <laughs> when you play that, you know, that team you did like or against that player? Uh, for me, it's not it's nothing person it's not personal at all for me because it's for me after sitting out for two years and kind of having to you know create my own training, having to use the limited resources to continue to improve my body and do all these things to get there. I was in a situation where I had accepted the fact that there was a chance I'd never play football again. Period. Not in the CFL, not in the NFL. So like to think about it now, it's just like. I have the opportunity to to even play with the NFL team. I just appreciate every opportunity. Guys I'm playing against, guys I'm playing with. It, it, it's no malice. or I mean, it's a competitiveness still, but mm-hmm. it's more of a I, I see it as myself within a game than, oh, I got to go against this guy. I got to beat this guy. It's more trust in my training than trust in my work ethic because that's what's got me there in the first place. Well, I definitely hope you have a big year. Hopefully we'll be talking about you like um, I'm sure you know Kwiatkowski. Isn't that how you pronounce his name? Kwiatkowski had that big year and was able to get that guaranteed contract. We're definitely shooting for you. Appreciate that. All right, man. Appreciate it. Again, it's Mr. James Vaulter, Chicago Bears linebacker. (laughs) 